Hello everyone, welcome to Lessons with Philip. And today our topic will be centered on sequences. What is a sequence? A sequence are numbers, they are numbers. Sequence and numbers that are written in a particular, when numbers are written in a particular or specific, when they are written in a particular or specific order, okay, such numbers are known, such arrangements are known as a sequence. When you have an arrangement of numbers in a particular order, so that arrangement is totally known as a sequence. For example, e.g., if I write this number 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on and so forth. This kind of arrangement, what I've done here, is known as a sequence. Okay? Another thing you need to take note is that each number, each number, each number in a sequence, in a sequence, is known as what? Is known as term. Okay, it's known as term. Okay, two is a term, four is a term, six is a term, eight is a term, ten is a term, and that is why, as you go further in this knowledge, you get to understand that two because it comes first, it is known as first term. This because four because it came second it is known as second term. Six will be third term, eight will be fourth term, and so on and so forth okay another thing i want us to take note is that there are some of the sequences that hence while some of them does not end okay when a particular sequence has a terminal end such sequence is known as finite finite sequence take note of this finite finite sequences a sequence that has a terminal when they have a terminal a terminal end okay eg if i write this sequence and it ends in 20 for example this kind of sequence is known as a finite sequence why because it ends no matter how it repeats it ends at 20. okay this kind of arrangement of numbers is known as a finite sequence okay another thing you need to take note is what you call an infinite an infinite sequence an infinite sequence is just an opposite of finite sequence there are sequence that has that does not have there has no terminal there has no terminal end okay for example this kind of example you two four six eight and it continues like that this kind of sequence is known as an infinite sequence because it has an infinite end okay okay so that kind of sequence is known as infinite sequence and the thing i want us to take note in this topic is what you call the rule of engagement and sequence every sequence has a particular rule that governs them okay if you check this example you see that from two we go to four from four to six that shows that we are adding two to each of the time you can predict the next number after 10 which should be what 12 because you know that each of them differs each of the terms differs by an addition rule by an addition of two that shows that the rule that governs the sequence will be an additional rule okay there are rules there are rules that governs that governs a sequence okay and that sequence may be an additional rule it may be additional rule it may be subtraction it may be subtraction it may even be multiplication it may even be multiplication Okay, it may even be division. Okay, maybe division, 
It may be power. Okay? Take for instance, if I write one, let's say I put two, and the next thing is I put four, and the next thing is I put six, 16, okay? This kind of sequence, what will be the rule? The rule is power rule. Because you square this, you get this. You square this, you get this. That shows if I square 16, that will be my next term. Okay? That shows that the rule that governs this sequence will be the power rule. Okay? If I write another sequence, let's say I have 2, another sequence, if I have, let's say I have 16, and the next thing is I have 8, the next thing I have is 4, and the next thing I have is 2, and the next thing I have is 1. This kind of sequence will be the rule of this engagement. The rule of this engagement in this sequence will be what? Divisional. Okay? It is deficient because I divide 16 by 2 to get 8. I divide 8 by 2 to get 4. I divide 4 by 2 to get 2. I divide 2 by 2 to get 1. That shows if I want to know the next term, the next term will be what? Half. Okay? It will be 1 over 2. So that shows the next one will be what? 1 over 4 because I know the rule that governs it. Okay? And so on and so forth. That is, if I have another sequence, if I say... This sequence is 16, and the next one is 14, the next one is 12. If I say, what will be the fourth term? That shows that I'm subtracting 2 from each of the terms. That shows the next one be what? 10. If I subtract 2 from this, it will be what? 8. Then it will be 6, 2, and so on and so forth. So the rule in this is subtraction rule. Is subtraction rule. The rule in this is what? Is also... It's a divisional, is a divisional rule. So the rule in this is a power. Okay, that is just to tell you that each of each of a sequence has a particular, as a particular law or rule that commands the next term, the arrangement of the term. Okay, another thing we need to take note is what we call successor, successor the successor and the predecessor, the predecessor in a sequence, okay? What is a successor and what is a predecessor in a sequence? For example, if I have this sequence, if I have this sequence, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, okay? Now, if I take a particular term of the sequence, which is 6. Now, a successor is the number that comes after a particular term. It's a number that comes after a particular number. Okay? Now, the successor of 6, the successor of 6 will be what? 8. So, my 8 will be my successor, will be my successor of 6. Okay? Why my 4 will be my predecessor, my predecessor, my predecessor of 6. A predecessor is the number that comes before a particular term. Okay? So, my 4 will be my predecessor of 6. So, I, you, can be, you can be hard to find the successor of 5th term. Okay? They, they didn't make, that shows that the successor... Of sixth term will be what the seventh term. So you have to find the value of the sixth term of, of the seventh term. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So you must know what to call a successor and a predecessor. Okay. Now this is what you need to know in a sequence. Another thing we need to identify is what to call the hand term of a sequence. The hand term of a sequence. What do you know by an end term of a sequence? An end term of a sequence is an nth term of a sequence nth term nth term of sequence okay an nth term of a sequence is a particular formula that enables you to calculate the value of a term okay it is a formula okay it is a formula to calculate, this is a formula to calculate the value of a particular 
the value of a particular term, particular term of a sequence. Okay? Take for instance, let's exa example. Let's do some example. Let's do some example. Let's say that I'm giving, giving the nth term, giving the nth term of a sequence as, let's say we're giving 1 over n squared plus 1. Find the first, the first four terms of the sequence. Okay? Now, we've been given a particular formula on the board. We'll be given an nth term of a sequence. Okay? Now, we have to find... We're asked to find the sequence. We're right to, we are asked to write out the sequence. The first four of the sequence. Don't forget I've told us. The sequence is just an arrangement of number in a particular order. Okay, now let's find the order. Since we've been given the formula, since the formula, which is the hence term of the sequence, is 1 over hence squared plus 1. Okay, now take note in sequence, n is regarded to as the number of terms. Anytime when you see n in sequence, it's known as the number of terms. Okay. Assuming I want to find the first term, for the first term, for the first term, okay, my n will be equals to 1. So you insert, you substitute your n equals to 1 in your formula. When you substitute, substitute, n equals 1 in 1 over n squared plus 1. So what do you have? If I have 1 over n squared plus 1, this will be equivalent to 1 over, my n is 1. That shows 1 squared plus 1. My 1 squared is 1 plus 1 will give me 2. That will be 1 over 2. And that shows... This shows that my first term is half, which is 1 over 2. Let's go to second term. For second term of the sequence, my hand will be equals to 2. So if I substitute my hand equals to 2 in the hand term, n squared plus 1, that will be 1 over, my hand is 2, that will be 2 squared plus 1. 2 squared is what? 4 plus 1, that is 5. And that will be 1 over 5. Now cho that shows that my second term will be what? 1 over 5. For my third term, for my third term, for third term, okay, my hand will be equal to what? 3. If I substitute n equals to 3 in the nth term formula, and that will be 1 over 3 squared plus 1. My 3 squared is what? 9. 9 plus 1 will give me 10. That shows my third term is 1 over 10. Okay? Now for my fourth term, for my fourth term, my fourth term, my hen will be equals to 4. So that shows that I substitute my hen equals to 4 in the hen term. The hand term is n, 1 over n squared plus 1. Now it shows that that will be 1 over 4 squared plus 1. Now because 1 divided by 4 squared is 16 plus 1, that is 15. Okay? Therefore, the 4, the 4, the first, sorry, the first, 4, terms of the sequence are the first one is what? 1 
over 2, comma, 1 over 5, 1 over 5, comma, and the third is 1 over 10, 1 over 10, comma, and the fourth one is 1 over 15, and so on and so forth. That shows the sequence will continue like that. If I'm asked to find the system, that shows it continue like that. Okay? This is the way we calculate the terms of the sequence. That shows my first term is what? 1 over 2, the second term, this will be second term, third term, and 1 over, one over 15 will be my fourth term. If you are given many examples, as long as you know your head term of a sequence, you can proceed to calculate any term of the sequence. Take for instance, if I'm still giving this, if I'm still giving this example, if I'm giving this example, supposing I'm giving the nth term, example two, if I'm giving the nth term, n term of a sequence is, let's say I'm giving 5n minus 2. Find the tenth term. As long as I know the nth term, the nth term is 5n minus 2. I has to find the tenth term. Therefore, my n will be equal to what? 10. So just substitute, substitute n equals to 10 in the nth term formula, which is 5n minus 2. So if I have 5n minus 2, this will be equals to 5 multiplied by 10 minus 2. Okay? 5 multiplied by 10 will be 50 minus 2. And that's equivalent to what? 48. That shows that since I know the formula, therefore, the tenth term the tenth term of the sequence is 48. Can you see I can calculate the value of a term as long as I know the formula, which is the hand term, okay? Now, in my coming class, we are going to do, we'll go deeper into, I don't, you have heard that before, what you call arithmetic progression. And later on, in our previous classes, we'll go to geometric progression. Okay? Now, sequence is very important because this is what to do. Do you know in mathematics, when, you, when we're in our nursery classes or in our junior classes, we know we are asked to recite our one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. Do you know between one and two, do you know that there are quite the numbers? They are quite large numbers that appears between 1 and 2. For example, I can say 1.5. 1.5 comes before 2. It's greater than 1, but we have 1.6. These are numbers that comes in between 1 and 2. Okay? So I can decide to say 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1 1.8. I know how they progress. Okay? Knowing how it progress, we know which this sequence where does it follow? Where does it belong to? Is it an arithmetic progression or geometric progression? It's very simple. As long as you follow this class, you really enjoy the class, you understand. Okay? Now, this is just an understanding on the introduction of a sequence. Thank you so much. I hope you have enjoyed the class. Kindly like my video, share to your friends, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. See you in my coming class. Bye.